I'm going to talk about what I think is the best alternative magic system ever created for D&D, and we're starting right now. Okay, it was the fall of 2001, and along with tons and tons of third-party D20 books on the market, Wizards of the Coast published one of their own D20 books. Though it was an adaptation of a literary work, there is a lot of novel ideas, novel, <laughs> novel, that can be mined for a modern 5e game, especially the unique magic system. Hi. I'm your friendly neighborhood Dungeon Master, and this is the Dungeon Master's Apprentice. Here, we work on creating my homebrew campaign world, The Cursed, and we talk about having a great gaming session at the table. Now, if you like these subjects, don't forget to subscribe. Otherwise, this video will play on a loop until you do. Welcome to Digital Groundhog Day. Let's look at the magic system from the D20 Wheel of Time role-playing game, published by Wizards of the Coast. Now, for those of you who don't know about the Wheel of Time series of novels, I'll add a link in the description. Robert Jordan's world is a high fantasy world that is also a low magic world. Well, sort of. In the novels, you learn about an earlier high magic civilization where, in the end, a great magical war literally broke the world. But we're not here to discuss the novels or the campaign world described in the Wheel of Time RPG book. I want to introduce to you the interesting concepts inside the magic system. At first blush, the magic system looks like the standard Vancey and D&D magic system. There are still spell slots and the spells are broken into spell levels. But the devil, they say, is in the details and this is where we see how completely unique the magic system is. A mage, called a channeler in the campaign world, taps into the flow of magic that permeates the world and uses that to shape and fuel the spell. So spells are not memorized, and any spell known by the caster can be cast at any time, as long as the player has an available, appropriate spell slot. But the spell slot is different than the traditional spell slots in D&D. These spell slots are considered effort. Think about Olympic weightlifters. They train lifting both heavy and not so heavy weights. In a single day, they can only lift the heavy weights so many times without the risk of injury. Even the lighter weights will exhaust the weightlifter eventually, and lifting light weights too many times will preclude his ability to lift the heavier weights. This is represented in the system by overcasting and undercasting. Overcasting is where a caster is out of high level spell slots and uses a lower level slot for the spell instead. This is the same as the weightlifter attempting to lift a too heavy weight when he is already fatigued. Depending on how fatigued he is, it might be easy and he only risks a small chance of damage, i.e. using a spell slot just below the requirement. Or very hard and at great risk because he is very exhausted, i.e. using a very low level spell slot. Undercasting is using a higher level spell slot to cast a lower level spell. Just like when the weightlifter does too many reps with the lower level weights, and started to preclude himself from doing any of the really heavy lifts that day. Add to this the fact that many spells have a range of slots that can be used to cast the spell. In 5th edition, the Fireball and Lightning Bolt have incorporated this idea, but in this system, most of the spells have varying effects depending on what spell slot was used to cast the spell. Take Raise Fog, for example, using a second level slot, the minimum, creates a circle of dense fog 50 feet in diameter, where using an 8th level slot, the maximum, creates a circle of dense fog 20 miles in diameter. From a DM's viewpoint, I love the underlying logic of it all. This is why I have made this system my magic system in my homebrew campaign world. I even got a second unique magic system out of it for druids. You can learn more about that in the link above. Now, from a player's viewpoint, I love the versatility of it. I love the idea of how, if I was playing a mage, my character can use a spell dialed to the correct level of power needed, and in times of great desperation, he can overcast and have access to spell powers that is needed, even if it's incredibly dangerous for my PC. I really like that flexibility. Now, if you try out this system, or have used it in the past, tell me about it by leaving a comment below. And if you like this video, try this one on the screen right now.
Until next time, adventure on.